completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 30 testing my Canon 6D DSLR camera and making a cylinder cover gasket for the low pressure cylinder the question is as I make videos every day why I have a bought a Canon 6D camera with a collection of very nice lenses like this one which moves in and out I'm not really used to this type of camera and I do find them a bit strange I think that you have to use the correct lens and get the type of focus correct so you can take good images that are not blurry around the outside edge. This is quite a nice effect but it gets on my nerves. Maybe I am a trifle odd but when I look around my peripheral vision is not blurred. And using this type of focus everything around the main image is blurred. On this one for instance you can see the steam turret and the whistle but everything else is blurry. For the last few years, and I'm on my second one, I use this type of camera. It's a Sony model AX53 and I really do like it. I do not film in 4K because the files are too big and take too long to edit. And because I do a video every day, I really don't have that much time to spend on the editing process. When I'm filming, I try and get the shots as near to what I need as possible. And this AX53 makes the job very quick. No messing about with lenses, occasionally I do use manual focus but most of the time it's on full auto. And here it is in action. My AX53 camera is quite close to the action and because of this, to avoid damaging the camera, it's fitted with a lens protector. It's a UV filter that screws on the front. Here for instance there is a danger of some of the bristles breaking off and colliding with the camera lens which I really don't want to happen. I haven't worked on this series for quite a while because I've been quite busy working on commercial projects and they always have to come first. Videos on this subject are a very niche market but I enjoy videoing my hobby and it seems to help out quite a lot of people which is a good thing. In this episode I'm going to make a gasket for the low pressure steam cylinder cover. And this is the way I normally make gaskets. I press the steam cylinder cover onto an ink pad and then transfer the image onto a piece of gasket material. And what is this gasket material, I hear you ask? Well, I really have no idea. I get it from a friend of mine who has a gasket company, and it's something for the automotive industry. The gasket material that I work on are the offcuts from larger gaskets. All I can say about it is that it's really good quality stuff. Time to get back to the job. I cut out the inked mark using a Stanley knife, but it was a bit rough, so here I'm making it more accurate by using a flapper wheel in my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. In terms of usefulness, this scores 100 points. I use it for so many little jobs with different things fitted in the chuck, and having it bench-mounted right at the side of me is just a bonus. As you can see, it's quite a good fit on the centre register. But there is a slight problem. I don't mean the blowholes in the casting, they're not terribly important because most of them are on the inside. The problem is, I've done something wrong. I've used the centre part of the cylinder cover to make the impression on the gasket material. And it was impossible to use the ink pad method for the real register that goes down inside the cylinder, the next one out. Why does this cylinder cover have quite a large piece that protrudes down into the cylinder? Is it to even up the exhaust beats? Because don't forget, at the other side of the piston, there is a piston rod, which decreases the volume in the cylinder underneath the piston. So is this protrusion on the cylinder cover to reduce the volume in the upper part of the cylinder? That's quite an intelligent guess, I suppose, but I think the real reason is that the top of the piston is shaped, and it's like a dish. And the piston's shaped that way to reduce its reciprocating mass which on a reciprocating steam engine is always a good thing to cancel vibration. As the piston rises up in the cylinder, it meets this protrusion on the inside. It doesn't collide with it. It just fills the empty space when the piston's at the top. I think that's what it's for. If there are any bona fide experts out there who really know what it's for, please put me right. This is a bit of a Heath Robinson way of doing the job. I use my calibrated eye and a pair of scissors to cut the hole in the gasket a bit bigger and then I cleaned up the edge once again on the flapper wheel in the Proxon motor tool. And now it fits around the part of the cylinder cover that just sits down in the top of the cylinder. The next part of the job is to draw around the cylinder cover. 
I'm using a biro for this that I found on the bench. And it really doesn't matter if it's oversize, you'll see why very shortly. The next part of the job was to drill through the gasket and for this I used a couple of pieces of wood to support the gasket and a Proxon motor tool to drill the holes in the gasket through the original holes in the cylinder cover. And then using my pair of scissors that are probably around 70 years old, I carefully cut out the gasket. In previous videos, several experts have pointed out that I should not cut sandpaper or emery cloth with scissors because it blunts them. I don't agree with these comments because I don't agree with a lot of the comments that people send in. Here's a finished gasket cut out by my really old pair of scissors fitted to the engine. I fitted the gasket with the green side uppermost, which was how it was drilled using the Proxon motor tool. But the engineering standard on this engine is so good that all of the cylinder covers fit on the studs in any position. It's obvious which way around this one has to be anyway. But I did try the gasket with the dark side facing up and it fitted perfectly too. Now it's time to look through the plastic box where I put all the 7BA nuts and I'm carefully fitting one of them to each stud. Some of the nuts were quite rusty and here I'm selecting the better ones. In no time at all, all the studs were populated with nuts. Here's the last one that I fitted in place and it's time to tighten them all up using a nut spinner. Being very careful not to shear any of the studs. I'm splitting up this video about fitting gaskets to the cylinders and I'm going to show some different ways of doing it, possibly better ways of doing it than I've shown in this one. You can see in this clip that clearly the gasket is too big for the cylinder, which is far better than it being too small. What I need to do now using this Stanley knife is change its blade for a new one and very carefully cut around the edge. These blades are very sharp indeed and if you put too much pressure on them they may slip and scratch the engine's metalwork. And whenever you're using sharp knives or saws, the very best health and safety warning that I could give about this was something that my father said to me every time I had a knife or a saw in my hand. You really must stop murdering your playmates and disposing of their bodies. No, he didn't say that. That was a joke, a play on words. What my father used to say was, always keep your hand behind the cutting edge. That way you can't cut yourself, which is very logical and very simple. And it always comes into my mind when I'm using sharp knives. And that's it for this episode. The low pressure cylinder cover is fitted in place. More to follow in the next episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.